So, despite the main characters of Splatoon being Inklings, we know next to nothing about them, or at least the game tells us nothing about them, but from putting together the info that we get from the Splatoon games, interviews from people who've worked on Splatoon, and a touch of fan theories, today I'm going to break down the biology of Inklings. The most basic thing to note that most people know is that Inklings have evolved from squids and not humans, but after that it starts to get much more complicated, so let's start at the very beginning of the Inkling family tree by breaking down this image. There's a lot of confusion on these two images here, the biggest difference is here are that one is breaking down inkling childhood development and the other which is the one we're going to deal with right now is when the inklings went from squids to kids or their evolution from little squids to actual inklings so the first squid we see here seems to be pretty normal and just basically like the squids we see in our world today i don't think this group of squids were the first squids to walk on land but i do think the group after that is and i'd like to point out here that i'm not talking about all the different types of squids there are that happen to be in the splatoon world because they're just about as negligible as races when it comes to human in biology. Some react differently to different lighting and weather conditions, but after that, we're all just human. And that's not a political statement right there. That's very basic biology. Okay, so let's get into the second group of squids we have here, and this is where things start to get interesting. So, the interesting developments we see in this class of squid is the formation of the black rings around the inkling eyes. They're starting to form mouths with their quote-unquote teeth, but since the inklings don't really have bones, those things that look like teeth are probably more akin to, like, super strong cartilage. There's gonna be a lot of stuff in inkling biology where bones should be that it's more likely super strong cartilage. It doesn't look like these things have legs yet, but based on the shape of its eyes, I believe the lack of legs isn't stopping this primitive inkling from living on land. And if these ones aren't the ones on land, they're the last ones to be in the water. The legs would definitely be the next place for evolution to go next. Also, we can see the beginning of what appears to be skin tone, different from the tentacle color starting, but in the next phase of inkling, things start to really kick up. Gone are the inkling days of sliding around on the ground, and in place are some very primitive legs. We also get the beginning of what we can eventually become more well defined arms and hands, but despite the lack of definition, I can definitely see these hands helping the inklings get around much more than the last stage. We also see that skin tone is much more defined in this stage, but what I think is one of the coolest things to note is that on the legs, you can clearly see suction cups forming on the outside of inkling tentacles rather than on the inside. This is more akin to how octolings have evolved to have their suction cups on the outside. I think inklings use these exterior suction cups to help itself support itself on its legs a little easier, since these are a lot more primitive than what would eventually come down the line. But now let's move on to the second to last stage. Now we've almost got the inkling we recognize today. The eyes are now totally in the front, showing the inklings are now predators rather than prey. The exterior suction cups are also all gone on the legs, and in place are basically the same legs we see today in inklings. The only real difference in the state of the inklings and the ones that we have here today are the very few stray tentacles, the tiny nose and the tiny ears as well, as they're just lacking behind a definition in the arms and hands. But that leads up to where inklings are today. Ears, legs, tentacles, arms, and hands now have all taken their final form, as well as the nose being the shape that it is now. So about the picture I talked about earlier, the picture that depicts inkling childhood development. The one that we looked at before was presumably the adult forms of inklings in their final stages of evolution. But this one is the childhood forms and how they grow to a fully formed inkling. First off, we got the baby inkling who we absolutely must see in game. Notably, it looks like the inkling squid that we'll eventually get into later. But besides that, its eyes are super close together and seem to have a hard time opening. After that, we see that the limbs, ears, and eyes start to change. The eyes spread apart more and more and the middle line between the inkling's eyes starts to become more visible. There aren't any fingers or toes yet, but the limbs are starting to branch out. Also, we can see that the mouth is starting to open up. In the next stage, we can see that inklings can walk around and are now socially required to wear pants. We also see that they have more control over their mouths. They also have eyes that are more symmetrical than the previous version. Still no fingers in this stage, but those don't come in until later. In the next stage, we see that inklings start to get involved in the big clothing culture that inklings have, as they're seen wearing shoes and shirts. I'd assume that they'd need to be wearing clothing anyway, but I think that the sense of culture is starting to develop here. But the last big developments are the thumbs, but no other fingers yet. So their hands seem to be more like mittens than hands, which may explain why ink-based fighting is such a popular sport amongst young inklings. They physically can't get into it yet until they've developed their fingers, which would explain why the youth have desire to do this. They want to be cool like all the other old inklings, but they can't really hold things like a splatter shot yet. Well, they can't fire it, at least. Finally, we have the 14-year-old stage where we see the inklings developing skin tone all the way, which by the way, inklings can change their skin tone on demand. But here, we have the inkling totally able to do all physical functions that their species can do, like going from squid to kid, which I'll get more into depth about when I talk about how the squid form works. Also, what we have to talk about, while odd to talk about, is inkling breast development. 
So we know that Inklings don't have nipples because the male Inklings, when they take too much damage in hero mode, loses their hero jack and reveals that they don't really have any. So if this is the case for female Inklings too, then this would lead to breasts being more things like muscles, which would make the female Inklings physically stronger than their male counterparts. And while we're on the uncomfortable biological subjects, let's talk about Inklings have kids. I don't think there's ever been an official confirmation on how Inklings have children, and honestly, we probably won't ever get one since this is technically a kid's game. Sorry, I don't really think the way like that, but I'm pretty sure Nintendo keeps the opinion that this is a kid's game. So I'm going to go off the theory that it's similar to how chickens lay eggs. The female chicken has a connection to the yolk sac for part of the egg's development, which could explain why inklings have belly buttons. So how they reproduce though is something that I couldn't find anything on. And quite honestly, I think my search recommendations would get a little messed up if I tried to figure out how inklings reproduce. So if you want to do that, be my guest, go ahead. I'm not doing it here though. So after that, I wanted to talk about why inklings react the way they do with water and what their bodies are actually made up of. But before we do that, we need to talk about how they go from squid to kid and how that works. And it is confusing. So to my knowledge, there hasn't been an actual confirmation as to how it works, but here's what we know. The squid form is kind of similar looking to how the baby inkling looks, just in a larger stage that takes some more features, like the eyes getting further apart. And during this transition, it's almost like they're switching all through the forms that they've grown into. But how do they do this? Well, there isn't really an explanation given, so I'm going to go off the game theory explanation here and say that they're using RNA to quickly switch between the two forms. Now, this is something that Nintendo will potentially give more detail on at some point, so this whole video may end up needing to be revised at some point. So, Inklings in Water. How does this work? So this hasn't been confirmed, but this is a theory that I really like a whole ton. When Inklings went from sea to land, their cell membranes became weaker, making the water much easier to break through, which explains the explosion they make when in the water, because they're literally exploding. Now, now, you might be thinking, wouldn't they have skin to protect from that water? Well, no. And the reason for this is that because inklings are primarily made up from ink. Yes, they're squids made out of ink. And it's not as crazy as you think. You and I have fleshy bodies, but we're mostly made out of water. It's probably something similar to inklings, but in their squid form, they're more ink than solid flesh. Notice how I specified in their squid form. That's because with some further research, I found some more details on the inkling transformation from squid to kid. The description from one of the Splatoon devs was that the transition is similar from how caterpillars turn into butterflies, just at like 10,000 times the speed. It's a metamorphosis where they go from kid to squid. They're becoming more ink and turn into their squid forms. To become one with the ink and go from squid to kid, they go from ink to muscle and cartilage. I think it goes without saying that you need to throw a little video game logic into this explanation because like RNA is fast but it's not as fast as we see it in the game and if squid bagging were to happen without all the video game logic the inkling would probably like either have a seizure, stroke, heart attack or some other form of bodily failure with all the shape changing. Also, we haven't touched much on how internal organs are arranged in inklings. That's because we don't know much about it. We know that they have ink sacs, but we can't trust how large the ink sacs actually are because the sunken scrolls they came from are primarily like Octarian propaganda. I don't think the Octarians would have much motive to lie about the position where it is in the body, but I think that there's a chance for it to be smaller than what we actually see in game because the way they're described is they're, they're like high pressure ink sacs, which means that the Octarians could be lying about just how big these are to potentially put more fear into the Octarians to be more afraid of the Inklings. Plus, with how big we're getting a description of here, these have got to be like pretty thin if they're going to put all of the other organs in there. We know they breathe air, and they probably digest things similar to how we do. So they've got intestines. So that's a lot of organs that aren't accounted for that we see the ink sac seems to take most of the room for. Plus, we've also got to remember that they've got tons of muscle and cartilage that keep them from falling over. So that's definitely taking up a lot of space too. There's no way to tell where everything is, but one thing that we can definitely challenge is the size of that ink sac, because there's no way that an ink sac can be that big and fit all the other organs that they need. But moving on from that, one of the most interesting things about inkling biology is the inkling's ability to respawn. To start this off, the respawn pads work by using super compressed ink to bring the inkling back, thus proving that inklings are more primarily ink. But a super dark concept that can come from this is how to kill an inkling. Inklings don't die because they're little ghost things which, those things are so complicated they need its own video. It goes back to the respawn point and gets compressed into that canister and restores itself. Of course, starting in its liquid squid form and going to its physical kid's form. But if if you remove the compressed ink from the respawn 
pad. How long can that ghost survive? We know that it dies while ascending the NIL a statue if they actually die there because there's no respawn pad and it's just written off as non-canon. So it's definitely possible to kill inklings when this compressed ink is taken out of the equation. So splatting does have a closer connection to killing than it gets credit for. I mean, when you get splatted, you literally burst out ink. It's pretty similar to the reaction when you have when you fall in water. The cell membrane isn't that strong, so it has too much liquid breaking through that the cell can't use and then it makes it explode. Another important thing to mention in terms of inkling biology is how the inklings swim through ink. If you are unaware, when inklings swim through ink, they almost become one with the ink. That's why they can swim through such thin layers of ink. This also gives more credit to the fact that inkling squids are mostly made out of ink. So something that doesn't really have a whole ton to do with inklings themselves, but is pretty interesting, is the ink around them and how they dissolve by getting eaten by the microbes in the air. I don't think we know a whole ton on them besides the fact that they exist and they don't seem to cause any harm to the life in Inkopolis. Also, salt makes ink dissipate faster. So maps like Salt Spray Rig probably have more ink disintegration than maps like Gobi Arena do. Honestly, that's all I can really think of for this first inkling biology report. I know there's stuff I didn't get to include, like genetic mutations and other stuff like that, so depending on how much people like this video, maybe I'll make another one someday. But for now, you should definitely have a good rundown on basic inkling biology and the theories of how their biology works. But wait, before you go, did you know that only 26.2% of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed? I know, that is way too low, but I have an offer that may change that today. If you subscribe today, you will receive your very own breath of air. Yep, if you subscribe, the next breath of air you take will definitely be twice as good as the one you took before. Alright gamers, that is it for me, I will see you later.